how do you apply the clean architecture with document databases. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can implement the clean architecture with Martin, which is a document database based on top of Postgres. We're also going to use minimal APIs for our endpoints, and we're going to use CQRS with Mediator for the application layer. I'm first going to show you what I prepared beforehand, and then I'm going to start with the actual implementation. The first project that I have is the web API, which is going to be our executable application. It's just a simple .NET 7 minimal API with no additional dependencies. Then I have the presentation layer, and this is where we are going to define our minimal API endpoints. Then I've got the application layer, which already has Mediator installed and a few dependencies defined. We have the command and query handler interfaces, and I added some interfaces for registering service lifetimes. And lastly, we have the domain layer, where I added a few abstractions for implementing domain-driven design tactical patterns, such as aggregate routes, domain events, and value objects. We are going to start from the domain layer, and we are quickly going to have a working implementation. Since we are building an eShop application, the first entity that I'm going to add is a product. The approach I'm going to use for grouping our entities is going to be to group by features instead of by types. So we're not going to have an entities folder, we're going to have a products folder, and inside of it we're going to define the product entity, and any related abstractions that we're going to add in the future videos. So let's add the class that's going to represent our actual product entity. I'm not going to complicate the implementation, I'm just going to add a few properties to our product, and then we're going to see how we can use it in the other layers in the clean architecture. The first property is going to be an ID, and I'm going to be using a 64-bit integer, for example. I'm going to give it a getter and a setter. Let's define a name property now, and we can assign it an empty string value because we're using nullable reference types. Let's give it a price. For that, let's use a decimal. And I said I want to be able to add tags to the product, so I'm going to define a list of strings, and this is going to represent my tags. And let's initialize it to an empty list. So this is going to be our product entity. I mentioned we are going to use a document database based on Postgres for persisting our entities. So we are able to do things like this, like persisting a collection of strings on the entity, which is a little difficult to do with relational databases, where you would have to define a separate table for storing the list of tags. Now that we have our product entity, let's go up to the application layer and define a feature folder that is going to hold the commands and queries for the product. So I'm going to name this feature folder product, and I'm going to start by creating the first command, which is going to be our create product command. So I'm going to name the folder create product. I first need to define the create product command. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to make it into a record, and it's going to implement the i command interface. So let me first make it into a record. And let's implement the i command interface. So i command. And what do we need to create our product? We need the name of the product. We need the price and a list of tags. So let me add those. Name. And we need to add the price. And we also need a list of strings, which is going to represent our tags. So this is our create product command definition. And I'm going to right away go ahead and add the create product command handler. We're going to implement the i command handler interface and we're going to handle the create product command. So let me add the interface and the create product command. So let's go ahead and implement this interface. What I want to do in the handle method is create a new instance of the product entity and persist it to the database. So let's add our first library to the application project. I'm going to look for a NuGet package and the one that I need is called Martin which is our document database, which is based on top of PostgreSQL. Let's go ahead and install the latest version of Martin inside of the application project. And let's go back to our create product command handler. What Martin gives us is the ability to work with an iDocument session. So I'm going to go ahead and inject that inside of the command handler. So iDocument session, this is coming from Martin. Let's give it the name of session. Let's inject the document session from the constructor. The document session is going to allow us to work with the database. It's basically the same concept as the NLD framework database context. And we're going to use it to persist our product entity. So let's go ahead and implement the handle method using the document session that we just injected. 
So I first need to create a new instance of a product. So I'm going to instantiate a new product and let's assign the name, price and text properties that we have on the create product command. Let's assign the product name, which is going to come from the command and also the price. And lastly, let's assign the tags to the request tags. I'm not going to be giving a value to the ID. Martin is going to take care of that for us when it persists the entity to the database. Let's make the handle method asynchronous because I want to use the async methods on the document session. So what we need to do is access the session and we just call the store method and specify the entity that we want to store. In this case, we're only storing our product and this is everything that you need to do to work with Martin. There is no entity configuration, there's no mappings. You just take the entity, store it using the session and Martin is going to take care of serializing the entity into JSON and persisting it inside of Postgres. To persist the entity inside of the database, we need to call session save changes async and this is going to store the product in the products table in the database. So this pretty much completes our handle method. So I'm just going to return the success result and finish the implementation. So this takes care of creating the product and persisting it to the database using Martin. Now we're going to go to the presentation layer and create our minimal API endpoint. I'm going to add another library to the presentation layer that's going to help us in defining our minimal API endpoints. And this library is called Carter. Carter gives us a set of extension methods for defining our minimal API endpoints and it's just going to make our life that much easier. Inside of the presentation project, I'm going to add a module which is going to hold the minimal API endpoints for the products route. So let's define it as products module. And what we have to do with the products module is implement the iCarter module interface, which is coming from the Carter library that I just installed. So iCarter module. And you're going to see that this interface only has one method, which is add routes. And we're going to use this method to define our minimal API routes. So the way that you define a minimal API endpoint is by calling the I endpoint route builder and on it we have the map post method. We're going to use the map post method to define an endpoint for creating a new product. I'm going to give it a route of products and we're going to define a delegate or just a lambda method to represent the body of our endpoint. So let's make it an empty delegate for now and let's think about what we actually want to do inside of this endpoint. I want to instantiate a create product command, then send it using mediator and then return some HTTP status code as a result. So let's define a simple request object that we are going to map to our create product command and then we're going to send it using mediator. So here's a simple request object which is called create product request. I'm going to specify it as the first argument that I'm passing to map post. I'm going to give it a name of request and I want to have another argument which is going to be our mediator sender. So let's format this a little differently. And I said I wanted to add the I sender, which is coming from mediator. So let me just import the mediator namespace. So let's define the body of our map post method. I'm going to create a new create product command. I'm going to map the create product request into the command by calling adapt, which is coming from the mapster library. And I just specify the create product command as the type. Now I want to send my command using mediator. And since mediator has an asynchronous interface, I'm going to make this an asynchronous Lambda method. Now we can await the sender.send and specify the command. Since this returns a result, we may want to instantiate the result into a variable and check if it is a success or failure result. But for simplicity's sake, I'm not going to do that right now. Let's just return an OK result to specify that we have created the product successfully. So I'm going to say return results.ok and this is how you return a 200 ok result in a minimal API endpoint. And what's left to do is configure the services required in our web API project. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to add the services required by Carter. So we call builder services add Carter. The second thing that you have to do to configure Carter is call app.mapCarter and this takes care of configuring our minimal API endpoints. And let's also define what's needed for Martin to function with PostgreSQL. So I need to call builder.services add Martin and I need to specify the connection string 
that's going to be used for connecting to our Postgres database. I call options connection and I need to specify which connection string to use. For that, I'm going to use builder configuration get connection string and the name of the connection string setting in my app settings.json is just database. So this takes care of configuring Martin, which is our document database based on top of Postgres. I'm not going to do a deep dive of Martin in this video, but just know that it's going to automatically take care of configuring the required tables in the database for storing our product entity. And when we add entities in the future, it's going to automatically create the required tables. I prepared a simple Docker Compose project, and we're going to take a look at the Docker Compose YAML file. You can see I just have two services. One is for our web API, and the other is for running Postgres inside of a container. I can just start Docker on my machine, run the application using Docker Compose, and I don't have to worry about instantiating the required services, which is Postgres in this example. One more thing that's left to do is to configure Mediator. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to call builder.services.addMediator. And we need to pass the application assembly, which is where our command and query handler are defined. So I'm going to access the application assembly and access the instance on it. And this should take care of configuring Mediator. So let's start the application with Docker Compose and try to persist our product. As you can see, we get the Swagger UI and we have one endpoint, which is our post products endpoint. And let's use it to define our first product. For example, let's create a Ryzen CPU. Let's give it a price of, I don't know, $100. And let's give it a few tags. One tag can be CPU and another tag can be microchip, for example. And let's send this request to our API and see if we can hit a breakpoint that I set inside of the create product command handler. We hit the endpoint that I added inside of the create product command handler. So let's instantiate a new product instance. Let's now store the entity using the document session provided by Martin. You can see that the ID is set to one. Martin uses a high-low strategy by default when defining an integer or a long ID, and it's going to pull a set of keys from the database, and it's going to store them in memory and assign them to new entities on the fly. So now I call the save changes async on the document session, and this is going to persist my product inside of the database. You can see this complete successfully. So I'm going to press continue and we're going to get the response for our API, which is 200 OK. So let's quickly define a get endpoint to fetch all of the products in the database. I'm going to add this to the products folder in the application layer. Let's call this feature get products and let's add the query and the query handler for getting the products from the database. So this is going to be the get products query. I'm not going to add any query arguments for now. It's just going to be an empty record. So public sealed record is going to inherit from iQuery and it has to return some sort of result. So I'm going to define a product response, which we're going to return from our API. And we're going to use that as the result of the query. We're going to be returning a list of product responses in the get products query. So let me define that. And I'm just going to move the product response into its own file. So we have the get products query. Let's add the appropriate query handler. So it's going to be the get products query handler. And let's quickly implement it. I'm going to make it sealed. And it has to implement the iQuery handler interface. And I need to tell it which query it's handling. It's going to be the get products query. And I also need to define which response we are returning, which is going to be a list of product responses. So now I can go ahead and implement this interface. And we're also going to be using Martin for querying the database. But this time I'm going to be using a different kind of session. I'm going to use the iQuery session, which is similar to as no tracking with NAD framework. So let's inject the session from the constructor and let's use it in the handle method to fetch our products. Querying the database with Martin is very simple. I'm going to create a variable that's going to hold my products. And we're going to say session. We're going to call the query method and specify which table in the database we want to query. Document databases don't actually have a concept of tables. It's called a collection in the document database world. But since Martin is based on top of Postgres, I think it's safe to say tables as well. We're going to query the products using this session. I'm going to call session query, specify product here. And we want to project the product into our product response. So I'm going to call select 
and we need to instantiate a new product response and I need to specify the product ID, name, price and tags. So I'm going to just quickly do that. So price and tags. Now that we have selected our product response, we just call toolist async and I can pass in the cancellation token. And of course we need to await this to materialize it into memory. So I'm going to make this type explicit. You can see that this actually returns a read-only list of product responses. So I'm going to return products and I'm going to call toolist just so that I don't have to go back to the query definition and replace this with an iRead-only list. But you can totally do that and I suggest returning read-only collections if you don't want anyone to modify what you return from the query handler. Let's quickly go to our products module and define a get endpoint for getting the products. I'm going to add it just above the post endpoint. So I'm going to call map get. We're going to use the same route of product. Let's define an async delegate, which is going to represent the body of our endpoint. We're going to inject the iSender from mediator. We're going to use it to send our get products query. So I'm going to make this a one-liner. I'm going to say results, okay. And I'm going to await sender.send and I'm going to instantiate a new get products query. And this should take care of sending the get product query and returning a list of products from this endpoint. So let's start the application and see if what we have is actually working. As you can see, we have two endpoints now. So let's try our get products endpoint to see if we are getting the product that we created in the database earlier. We do indeed get our Ryzen CPU that I just created. Let's also try creating another product and see if it's persisted. I'm going to create a new Ryzen CPU. Let's give it a price of 200 and let's update the name to version 2.0 and let's send this request to our database. As you can see, this completed successfully. So if I go back to the get products endpoint and send it again, we're going to get back both of our CPUs. What's interesting to note is that the ID is going to be 1001. I mentioned that Martin uses a high-low strategy for generating the IDs, and the batch of IDs that it takes from the database is 1000. So if you stop the application and start it again, Martin is going to lose the 1000 IDs that it registered in the database. So this is why we have the ID of 1 for this document and 1001 for the second document. So this is the clean architecture using a document database with Martin and minimal APIs for our endpoints. I'm curious to hear what you think about this implementation of the clean architecture. So please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And until next time, stay awesome.